Population growth, rapid urbanization, and energy insecurity are causing a soaring demand for wood fuel across Sub-Saharan Africa. It is estimated that wood fuel is the main source of energy for cooking for over 60% of households, contributing to the food security and nutritional needs of millions of people. But due to the inadequate governance and the informal nature of the sector, it is currently a major cause of forest degradation and deforestation. As different countries across the region share common challenges to make wood fuel more sustainable, the Center for International Forestry Research and the Forest and Farm Facility hosted a regional exchange with representatives from Angola, Botswana, Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, Mozambique, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe to discuss how to better incorporate hood fuel in energy and poverty reduction policies and to encourage mutual learning from other countries' domestic hood fuel strategies. RDC n'a pas jusque là de politique appropriée pour le bois énergie. Nous savons que le code forestier n'a pas tenu compte de tous les aspects liés au bois énergie, mais nous savons que ces bois énergie là c'est le premier parce que ça fait partie de moteur de déforestation et c'est pour cela aujourd'hui dans ces assises nous allons essayer de présenter la situation de la RDC et voir dans la mesure du possible comment copier c'est que les autres euh, voisins font déjà dans le domaine pour permettre à ce que nous puissions lutter dans, euh, contre la déforestation. Moçambique fosse o país o único país que pronto que tinha este tipo de problemas, mas eu agora portanto há meio dia que estou aqui sinto que a região toda está com este com o mesmo problema. Então pronto a ideia aqui é vermos como é que como é que vamos atacar isto porque ali Como foi dito, quer dizer, é mais um problema político do que técnico. Então, como é que nós vamos, quer dizer, chegar aos fazedores políticos e convencer a eles que biomassa é uma área bastante importante? Due to the fact that uh, in Botswana we are mostly in the semi-arid areas of, uh, of, 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 of Africa, uh, so our feedstock in terms of trees and vegetation is not that much. Though at the moment we do have a challenge because now the demand for, for, producing, for producing charcoal is coming up and our legislation hasn't been uh, dealing with that, our, our previous legislations. So now we need to take this time to learn from others. The event, which took place on February 26th to 27th, and Lusaka's Mulunguchi International Conference Center also served as a platform to discuss cross-border movements of charcoal across the region. Strictly enforced laws that limit or ban charcoal production in some countries are driving new regional charcoal trade dynamics that are yet to be fully understood and call for increased regional cooperation. A country can regulate wood fuel in their own country to stamp out deforestation, but then that transfers the problem of deforestation to the next country, which might not be so regulated. So that cooperation then is important. We are aware that uh, Despite the fact that we are, we are, we are not, uh, at the moment, we are not dealing with charcoal production, it's happening somewhere behind the scenes and it's, it's crossing borders. Now we need to work together so that we can monitor uh, this illegal uh, trade that is now going on uh, across the, the, the countries, the South African countries. Yeah. Cross-border movement of charcoal is a big challenge because we don't have a common position between our neighboring countries where we legally or in our statutes we don't bar the importation of, of charcoal. This means now, now that charcoal can come into Zimbabwe from other countries. But because it, when it comes 
you are not able to tell whether this charcoal is locally produced or it is come in from uh, from outside the country because our borders are very porous. Uh, a lot of it comes through the illegal entry points. Now they take advantage of that and then produce the charcoal locally and then report that it has come from outside. And unfortunately, our neighboring countries, we have not come sit down as a group to see how we can control that. Based on the, the recent studies that we, we've, we've done, we've noted that uh, there is a lot of uh, cross-border trade in both firewood and charcoal. Uh, uh, this trade is very informal uh, because uh, uh, normally they don't use the, 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 the border points, they use the plus borders. And we're getting most of uh, what we've noted is most of this charcoal is coming from either Zambia and Mozambique. If we uh, strengthen our law enforcement in Malawi, then most of the charcoal will be coming from these countries. So it will, it will be seen like we, we are contributing to the deforestation of those neighboring countries. Export of charcoal currently from Zambia is not allowed, but uh, the informality in which it happens, we have established that it moves between countries. What we are also getting from our neighbor countries like Zambia, DRC, Congo, Malawi, is through the, the, the vehicles which are carrying cargo from Tanzania out to these countries. So when the, these lorries uh, go back to Tanzania, they can as well haul uh, some charcoal from Zambia, from Malawi, and from the RRC Congo. Charcoal cross-border in Angola, we don't have so much record, official record, but we know that uh, in one of the northern provinces called Kabinda, somehow charcoal used to go to DRC, but there are still information that we need to do some uh, basic studies to understand how much and how often it goes out. And we may find that also in the border with uh, Namibia, we are likely also to have this kind of situation going on, but in reality, after doing some uh, uh, field studies, we can better uh, inform how much and how often it goes out. But up to now, we don't have a record for that. Currently, we understand uh, that uh, there are similarities in terms of uh, policies, uh, uh, laws, regulations that exist between countries and, well, in terms of the extent to which they are enforced, uh, differ uh, or varies between countries. But uh, surely we, we see that uh, the Cross-Border Trade Association, for example, is uh, one of the two that can bridge because then understanding of bringing in the regional aspect then uh, is a starting point to begin to talk at a regional level and move into sustainability and provide a, a more uh, sustainable aspect of wood fuel from production, the movement, and how it's done, the institutions that are involved, and also collaboration between these is, is, is enhanced. As we all know, effects of climate change know no boundaries. It is therefore important that we shall, we shall share national experiences and address the challenge of climate change collectively for sustainable development. The organizers and delegates expect that this event will serve as a wake-up call for policymakers to adapt a regional approach to promote a more sustainable wood fuel sector that can contribute to development and avoid negative environmental impacts.